Hey everyone, welcome to Yorktown, Virginia. The siege of Yorktown is in all the history books in America. Everybody knows how on October the 19th, 1781, British troops under the command of Lord Cornwallis surrendered to the combined French and American forces here at Yorktown. And Lafayette was here. He commanded the American assault on Redoubt No. 10, led by Alexander Hamilton. And today, I want to tell you more about a lesser known story involving Lafayette. His return visit to Yorktown four decades later on October the 19th, 1824, to mark the 43rd anniversary of the Allied victory here. So together we'll see how Lafayette visit in 1824 confirms the narrative of 1781 and at the same time enriches the story of Yorktown. We'll take you to the famed Yorktown battlefield. We'll show you some of the older buildings in town. And together we'll go experience the iconic Yorktown riverfront. So we have many things to do today in Yorktown. So let us waste no time. Let us hit the trail. Let's follow the Frenchman. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Your next stop is the Yorktown Victory Monument. So this is the Victory Monument, as it's called. It honors the military alliance between France and the United States that led to uh, the victory at the siege here. And what I'd like to talk about here is that it honors the officers, what I call the blockbuster officers of each of the sides, right? So the French side and the American side. So for the Americans, you have George Washington, and for the French, you have Rochambeau, that commanded the, uh, the ground forces, and then you have de Grasse that commanded the Navy, the French Navy that assisted here, that was critical. And you will notice that Lafayette's name is not on the monument. And the reason for that is that his birth and his conscience, the fact that he served with Americans, uh, were sending conflicting signals. Think about it, where would you put his name? Would you put him with the French or with the Americans? So as a result, um, his name is nowhere to be seen. And what's interesting about this monument is that it's actually on federal land. So this is uh, a, a monument in you know, the small town of Yorktown, but it, it's managed by the National Park Service. So I think it sends a very good signal that this is a monument of national significance that belongs to all Americans. Yorktown was such a pivotal part of American history. Um, it's where Washington defeated Cornwallis in October 1781, effectively winning the American Revolutionary War. Um, what about Lafayette? What did he do here? Oh, Lafayette played a very important role here. He's one of Washington's division commanders, uh, quite a young one, uh, along with a German division commander, Baron von Steuben, and an American, Benjamin Lincoln. So Lafayette came here on October 19th of 1824, and when he came, uh, it was a big event. Uh, there were many, many people here to greet him, and he stayed at the Nelson House, and he could barely get into the Nelson House because so many people were here greeting him. And when he came back out of the Nelson House, he had so many people wanting to touch his hands. Uh, we forget how much he was so admired and reverenced in this country. Why do you think the military alliance between the United States and France was significant here? Uh, the American patriots would not have won their independence without the help of the French. Not only did they bring military troops and money and supplies, but the French Navy under Admiral de Grasse played a pivotal role in the Battle of the Capes, which is probably the most important naval battle 
in America's history and so few Americans know about it. The French fleet managed to get control of the Chesapeake Bay, which prevented Cornwallis from being able to escape at Yorktown and also to be resupplied. And without the French fleet maintaining control of the Chesapeake Bay, what happened here at Yorktown would not have happened. Celeste, what, what does it feel like to be a resident of Yorktown, to live here every day, wake up and know that so much history has happened here? It feels so special. It feels special every day. I know that sounds funny, but you can't walk in Yorktown without feeling that you're a part of a much larger story. It's special every day. People walk Yorktown every day. People sail on the York River. And to know that you're the next chapter in that story is something that means a lot to everybody who lives here. Every piece here in Yorktown is still a piece of that story, but now it's come full circle and we all still live here and we all have businesses here and we're a part of a grander picture of what America has evolved into. So this building is called the Cold Diggs House and it's from 1726. There are nine buildings still standing in Yorktown from before the American Revolution and this is one of them. What we've done with the building is taken it from being a home into a business. And so you can come here and go upstairs into the old bedrooms and now they're dining rooms. And you can sit up there and think, who used to be up here looking out onto Main Street? I mean, I'd like to think maybe Lafayette would have been in there too, wouldn't you? One of the things that was really important to us when we decided to lease this building from the National Park was to bring awareness that coffee was the drink of patriots. So during the American Revolution, if you were drinking tea, you were getting taxed on it, and that was a problem for many people. Yes, we all heard about the Boston Tea Party. Yorktown had our own tea party where the tea was thrown into the York River just down the hill. And so a way to show your connection and your support for the new revolution and to become our own country was that you drank coffee. And so my company here roasts coffee in Yorktown about two blocks from where the battlefields are. And that just brings the whole story full circle where now in Yorktown we're producing coffee for patriots. Around mid-October 1824, Lafayette was in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Visited the Navy Yard, Commodore Tingey there. And the next day, he crossed to Alexandria, Virginia. At the time, Alexandria is a full part of the District of Columbia. So the governor of Virginia did not want to receive Lafayette on behalf of the Commonwealth and on behalf of Virginians in a different jurisdiction. So the call was made to have those official honors tendered to Lafayette right here in Yorktown, Virginia. So after a full day in Alexandria, October the 16th, spent the night there, and on the 17th, Lafayette made a private stop at George Washington's Mount Vernon to pay tribute to the memory of the first president, and then sailed down the Potomac River aboard the steamboat Petersburg. And around the mouth of the York River on October the 18th, 1824, he swapped boats and he got on the steamboat Virginia. And that's that boat that took Lafayette to the Yorktown beach at a place called Point of Rocks. So the arrival was very spectacular because Virginians had not seen Lafayette in decades. And this is here that they chose to honor Lafayette on Virginian soil for the first time during the tour. So we're going to the sites of Redoubt number nine and Redoubt number 10. These are the two famous redoubts that were stormed, one by the Americans, Redoubt number 10, and one by the French, Redoubt number nine. And it was so central, these two events to the siege of Yorktown that in 1824 when Lafayette came back a lot of the activities that took place on the battlefield actually revolved around the location of these two redoubts. So what was a redoubt? A redoubt was a defensive mechanism that was mounted on top of an earthwork and it had the function of slowing down the advances of the enemy lines and uh, with also the mission of holding up defense points so they would make it harder for the uh, opponent, the aggressor, the attackant, 
uh, to move forward. Can you imagine how much easier it is to defend a redoubt like this than it is to attack it? So many waves, imagine so many waves of French soldiers here in this case that had to attack in order to take the redoubt. Think about it. All right, this is the site of redoubt number 10. So that's the one that was assaulted by the Americans, the troops that were commanded by Lafayette. And in 1824, in honor of the siege in 1781, an arch, gigantic arch was erected here, 24 feet high. And so Lafayette was passed under, was addressed here. And it was very moving because the gentleman that performed the ceremony, General Taylor, actually wanted to place a wreath above Lafayette's head and Lafayette politely declined. And he said, I should really share this with other people that played a key role in 1781, like Mr. Fish, the last uh, officer that had a connection with uh, Redoubt Number 10, the storming, that was still alive at that time. And so they shared, he gave it to Mr. Fish. He said, we, you really should hold on to this uh, for the both of us. And from there, Lafayette was taken uh, on a line that was established here by uh, soldiers and he reviewed those soldiers and he proceeded to the second redoubt, the redoubt that was stormed by the troops of the French, by vieux -Ménil. So this is the site of redoubt number nine, so that's the redoubt that was stormed by the troops, the French troops under the command of vieux -Ménil in 1781. So in 1824, when Lafayette gets here, remember this is the end of the line, Lafayette reviews all these troops lined up, he gets here, there's an obelisk here that's uh, up. The number of people that were here to witness Lafayette's whereabouts on the battlefield in 1824 is spectacular. There's like between 10,000 and 15,000 people here lined up to see Lafayette. That's a lot of people. And it's all for this Frenchman that returned and captivated all the minds for two days here. That was so special for so many Americans. An arch on the side of redoubt number 10, an obelisk on the side of redoubt number nine, and finally, another obelisk on the site where General O'Hara of the British Army surrendered the sword on behalf of Lord Cornwallis to the second in command of the Continental Army, Benjamin Lincoln. And that took place here, and I think it was important to symbolic for Lafayette to finish his journey on October 19th, 1824 here to celebrate that victory and the Franco-American alliance that had led to securing American independence and what it truly meant for this young republic and to the world that would be changed forever by the success of the American Revolution. So you have the French army to the left with the prominent figure Rochambeau. Uh, to the right, you have the Americans that are lined up behind the benevolent eye of George Washington and in the middle, Benjamin Lincoln accepting the sword from Mr. O'Hara and you see the British troops lined up um, parading basically as defeated uh, enemies here in the middle and it falls upon Lafayette 43 years later to remind Americans of that very powerful moment and what it meant for the country and for the world. Because this is the birth of the young American Republic was solidified on the battlefield of Yorktown and it's Lafayette's mission 43 years later to resuscitate those patriotic feelings. And he did it between Redoubt 10, Redoubt 9 and here. He did that. One of my favorite favorite things to do is when we have the 4th of July and celebrate independence is to listen to the fireworks. Not just watch them, but listen to them. Because when you listen to the fireworks and multiply it by 10 or 20 or even 100, that's the sound of the Battle of Yorktown. That is the Siege of Yorktown. That's how much the cannons were firing on Cornwallis. That's what the, the American and French forces were bombarding them with. We were standing in front of the Victory Monument 
the cornerstone wasn't laid until about 15 years after the American Civil War. And so the symbolism on the monument was going to emphasize unity after such a great time of division in America. So you have the 13 women representing the 13 colonies, and underneath it goes one country, one constitution, one destiny, trying to emphasize America's unity. America has always had times of division in this country. Even during the Revolutionary War, you had Americans fighting Americans. Of course, the Civil War and the upheavals of the 50s and the 60s. And in modern times, we have division. But there are moments in our history and moments that pull us back together. And um, hopefully in the days ahead with the anniversary of the Revolutionary War and, and learning about such great characters in the Revolutionary War, such as Lafayette, it will help to give us that unity again. In 1824, more than 40 years had gone by since the siege of Yorktown. The country had had four decades to exist as a, an independent nation and it was ready for a milestone celebration. And truly, if there was one place in the country that could spur revolutionary war patriotic feelings with the same intensity across the entire Union and that every American could relate to, Truly this place was Yorktown, Virginia, and people here in the Commonwealth understood that very well. They were very much aware that receiving Lafayette, the last surviving major general of the Continental Army to Yorktown all these years later, presented a unique opportunity to come together and honor those American institutions. And today we've been able to see how Yorktown is aware of this legacy and what steps it has taken to embrace it and to celebrate it. And we're very happy to be able to add a contribution to the significance of the Franco-American Alliance here in Yorktown. That's it for us today. I want to thank you for following the Frenchman to Yorktown. I will see you on the trail very soon. Thank you for watching. A bientôt.